All right, let's start talking about some spring fundamentals before we really are going to get started with spring. In this small video, I'm not going to dive into the details of spring, how to create a REST API, etc. My point is really here to just get you ready for your first tutorial and that you're not going to be confused with languages such as what is a spring bean, what is a spring container, etc. Well, in order to do so, I'm first going to be explaining what spring is, what the difference is between the spring framework and spring boot, and how spring does this magic. Then we'll also discuss spring beans, the spring container, and also dependency injection. So what is spring? Well, the spring framework, it's actually called, is focusing on creating enterprise applications with Java. And this means that with the spring framework, you can actually cut out lots of boilerplate that you would need without a framework such as spring. So you can really quickly start developing enterprise applications with Java. So how does Spring do this? Well, Spring has very many different projects and it uses something called inversion of control. This is really important for Spring and also enables transactions. Let me show you the many Spring projects that there are. So here we are on the official side of Spring and here you see a bunch of the projects. And these projects, they contain security, big data, etc. Spring Boot is even a project, Spring Data, Cloud, Security, GraphQL, um, there's so many of these. And these you can all use to help you creating your application using Spring. So what is Spring Boot then? We just saw it in the list of projects, but what is Spring Boot? Well, Spring Boot is built on top of the Spring Framework. So beneath the surface of Spring Boot, there is the Spring Framework but it has some features that enable us to quickly develop applications with Spring Boot. And one of these really big ones is that there's an auto configuration in place and you can have custom configuration as well. And this happens with the annotations and you can recognize annotations with the add sign that's in front of them. So they look a bit like the add annotation that's on the slide here. If you look at the Spring Framework only, you'll see a lots of XML files with lots of configuration and this is no longer necessary. So Spring Boot really simplifies the way we can use the Spring Framework. And it's, for example, great for standalone APIs. So at this point, you may be wondering, how does Spring do its magic? Because with Spring, you can really easily work only a few Java files, and there you have a REST API. Spring is using the principle of inversion of control. And inversion of control is actually meaning that instead of the programmer really de deciding the flow of the application, deciding what objects are created, etc. This is all handed over to the Spring Framework, or more precisely, to the Spring Container. And we'll learn in a bit at what that is. One of the things that the inversion of control entails is dependency injection. So dependency injection is a bit more specific. But what happens with dependency injection is that instead of in our code, we have to instantiate some new object, Spring is actually instantiating this object. So for example, if we have some sort of class, with a constructor and this constructor is taking a certain argument, then Spring can actually inject this argument whenever it wants to create this instance. Well, not in all cases, in very specific cases, but we'll see that soon enough. So for example, if you would have some sort of service, say a user service, and our user controller is using this user service, then we can probably just say inside our user controller, all right, so we have a private user service, user service in here, and we don't need to say, equals new user service, because this dependency, we don't need to create it. The Spring container is injecting this for us. And we'll see an example in just a bit. And then we have the Spring magic that's happening. And actually this magic, it's all inside the Spring beans and the Spring container. So you might wonder at this point, magic beans, or, you know, just regular beans. But actually beans, they have nothing to do with what you think of when you use the word bean in your day-to-day -day life. So it's not coffee beans or whatever. It's just probably called this way because Java has beans and Java has beans because it refers to coffee and we have coffee beans. But what is a bean in spring terms and actually, well, and this is really put simply. So a bean is an instance of a class that is managed by the spring container. So the spring container decides when to create this instance and when to kill this instance again and how to set this instance, how to initialize the instance. This is all up to the spring container. So to go back to my example of the user service, creating this user servers instance done by the Spring Container. So once more, and I really want to be able to wake you up at night and then ask you, tell me, what is a bean? And you'll have to tell me an instance of a class managed by the Spring Container. All right, I've said Spring Container quite a lot at this point, but you may wonder, what is a Spring Container? 
The spring container is actually part of the core of the spring framework and it's responsible for managing all the beans. And <laughs> once more, at this point maybe once too many, a bean is an instance of a class managed by the spring container. So the spring container is creating these beans, these instances, is deleting the instances, is initializing the instances, etc. And what it then does with these instances is that it's actually performing the dependency injection. So making sure that these instances are at the right place at the right time for our application. All right, so enough slides by now. Let's go have a look at some code. So here is some code and I used the spring initializer to create this. Let me show you the spring initializer so you can see how to create this yourself as well. So we're gonna go to start.spring.io. And in here, we can just click on a few buttons and create the Spring project. So what I did, I, cre I created the Maven project. I choose this version since it was selected default. Could also have chosen this version. Changed this one to something like basic beans. And then I said I want to Java 16 since this is the one I'm having on my computer. And then I just clicked on generate, a zip file was downloaded. I unpacked this, imported it in IntelliJ and that's it. If you have the paid version of IntelliJ, you actually have this built in under new project, I believe. Anyways, um, so this is what the start.spring.io created for me. And this is just a Spring application. It's just working out of the box. I can run this. Let me show you. So this is running. It's just not doing a lot. And I'm actually also not planning on doing a lot in this video. I just want you to understand what beans are. And actually I can catch the thing that this one is returning. So this run method is returning the application context. And I'm going to be catching this application context and showing you what beans are inside. So let me show you. I'm going to say application context APC equals this. And then on the next line, I'm going to loop through every bean name in the application context. There we go. I'll just print it. And then you can see what beans are all in there. So let me run this again. And you'll see that there are so many beans in here by default already. So let me show you all these beans. So these are all the bean names that are available. And most of them start with org.springframework.context, etc. We have the basic beans application. And this is actually a bean that we created by having our class up here. Let me show you. So this basic bean application name is coming from here. So if I would change this name to something else, let me just ref refactor to not that full of inspiration. So I'm just going to add a two in the back and I'm going to say, okay. And then I run it again and you'll see that right now this bean is going to be called basic beans application two, because default is just using the name of the class, but then starting with lowercase letter. So there we have it. And all these others, they're all just the spring framework beans. So lots of beans, long story short, but we can define and we will define many beans ourselves as well in a regular application. So let's go ahead and create some beans. So for example, if I were to add a Java class in here, maybe something like, um, well, let's say a customer. And this customer, I can say to the Spring Framework that this customer is actually a bean. And I can do so by adding the add component stereotype on top. And well, let me run this once more. You might get tired of me running this application a million times, but I hope this is going to help you understand. So right now, if I scroll all the way up, we see that we have our customer bean over here. And that we get this customer bean is because we are using the add component annotation. Actually, a few other annotations will also result in a bean, for example, add service, but also add um, controller and also add repository. And well, let me just show you that this is actually also a bean. So I'm going to control click on this one. And then you'll see that on top here, it has the add component annotation. So this is why the repository is also a bean. So what's happening here is that from this root class, we are going to be looking for components. And this is done with the add component scan annotation. So I'm gonna click on this one again so we can see what's happening in the add Spring Boot application annotation. And on top of here, we're going to see the add component scan. 
And this is literally going to be scanning for components for beans to include in the application context up in startup. And actually this is also important, these two, it's enabling auto configuration and spring boot configuration. So this spring boot application annotation, it's actually just a collection of mainly these three annotations. Um, anyways, bit besides the point. So from here, we're going to be looking for these beans. And this is actually an important fact. So it's looking from this place. So if I would put this customer one folder up or create a new package and just gonna call this blah blah, and I'm going to be adding our basic beans application in here. So let me refactor this. And well, <laughs> you might guess this. Let's run it again. You won't see the customer anymore because the components scan is not going to be picking up on customer when it's in a different uh, package that's higher. So it will look into the inner and nested packages, but it won't look up. So as you can see, we no longer have the customer in here. Let me scroll up a bit so you can see it well. And if I were to drag this customer down one folder like this, I'll say refactor, and then I am going to be running it. <laughs> well, once more, now I'm gonna run it so much more still. Um, you'll see the customer is back. So now it's finding it again because it's scanning for the components from this blah blah package and now it's finding the customer again. All right, so let me refactor this a bit so that we can clean it up again, since this is a bit besides the point. So I'm going to be getting this back and also I want to get rid of the two again. There we go. So that's cleaned up. You now know how we can actually create a bean. We can just annotate a class with add components or add servers or add whatever. Well, not add whatever, actually, add controller, any, any annotation that is a component. So let's clean this up a bit. And I'm going to keep the add component annotation on top of here. So this is still a bean. So what would happen right now if I was going to add some fields to this? So for example, say that our customer has a private string name and also has a private address address like this. I need to create the class for address still. Let me do that. Address. And then in here I will create the constructor with both values and I will also create the getters and the setters. And the Spring Framework is actually using the getters and setters beneath the surface, so mind what you leave out and what you keep in there. Um, anyways, if I would run this again, our application is not going to start. And the reason why is actually very helpful. So let me show you what's going wrong if I run this. So we get the notion that the application failed to start and it's giving a very good description. It says parameter zero of constructor in blah -de blah require the bean of type string. That could not be found. Well. And this is because we are inserting a class here, a string class inside our bean constructor. So instead of the default constructor, the spring framework is now using my custom constructor, but it doesn't know what to use for the name or for the address, but that's the next error we're going to be getting. So what I could do, I could create a bean of type string and I can do so by adding a special method and annotated with bean in a config file. So I can actually do this here. So for a string, this is clearly a bit weird to do. You would normally not do this, but just for the sake of this demo, let me show you how to do that. So I'm just going to be returning my name, uh, Micah, there we go. And I'm going to be annotating this with at bean, like this. And it must be a config type of class to be able to do this. You can also annotate classes with at config or at configuration. I would, yeah, at configuration and then it will pick it up. But this one is a configuration already. If we dive into these annotations, we'll find it at some point. So let me run this again and you'll see that we are one error further now when we start this application. Oh, there we have it. So right now it's saying parameter one. So the second parameter, required a bean of type address. Well, we could do this the same way. We could create a bean like this in here, 
But what we could also do is just add add component on top of our address and it will also magically become a bean because of the component scan. So if I run this now once more, and now it will be working, and we get the output again of all the beans that are in the framework. So let me show that address and string got added now. Oh, actually we have address, customer and get name. And this is because the add bean annotation, it's taking the method name as default. You can actually specify here what the name should be with extra parameters and stuff. But that's not too important for now. Just know that by adding this, the string instance, in this case containing the value Maika, it's being managed by the spring container. It's initializing it whenever it's needing the string bean. And the same goes for address. It's initializing it whenever it's needing it. So once more, what is a bean? Well, a bean is an instance of a class managed by the string container. And I'm just grabbing the application context up here that's being returned when we run the application. And from there, I can get the bean definition names. You can actually also get the actual beans by the name and then you can get the object, etc. But I'm not going to be doing that for now. Just know that the instances of both the customer, the address and the string, they are alive inside our applications container. So the uh, IOC container of Spring. All right, that's it for the demo. I really hope this is helping your understanding of what the Spring container does, namely managing of the beans and what a bean is, namely the instance of the glass managed by the Spring container.